Lord, we worship you. We thank you for being a loving father. Thank you for being the reigning king over our life. Thank you for this wonderful moment in your presence. Thank you for this season of refreshing. Thank you for greater things ahead. We thank you because it is by your power that we are standing. We thank you for your ever sufficient grace and your mercy that is being renewed unto us each morning. We say thank you, our Heavenly Father. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. We have this assurance in you that the greater things in the last three months to come is nothing compared to what we've ever experienced in our life. We say thank you for the greater things ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all praise, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration. Thank you, Asher, of this. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands together for the King of Kings? Amen. Can we have our seat in God's presence? Thank you so much. God bless us all. It's a great honor to stand before great men and um, speak the word of God. You have to watch out. You have to watch out because very soon, and I mean very soon, those that are being fed, we turn to people that will feed others. So we watch out. God is coming for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. By the special grace of God, this morning we'll take our reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew, chapter 13, verse... 24. There are quite some parables in the book of Matthew chapter 13, the sower, the wheat, the mustard, um, or the leaven, and, um, and some other, but we'll concentrate on the parable of the weeds. That's Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24 to 30. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then? At his tears, he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, We thou then what we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tears, and bind them in bundles, to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The topic we'll be considering today by the special grace of God is while men slept. While men slept. And by the special grace of God this morning, we'll not be able to look at um, all the verses in the scripture we've read. We'll only concentrate on verse 25. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the weeds and went his way. That's just the part of the scripture we'll concentrate on this morning. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The explanation of this parable was explained after the parable of um, um, the mustard seed and um, the yeast or the unleavening at the later part of the chapter. But we're taking another dimension to what this part of the scripture is saying. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the weeds and went his way. We all know what sleep is. Most of us engaged in that activity yesterday and we woke up this morning looking fresh in the presence of God, right? And here we are, glowing, even without powder, without makeup, without um, some of us are still shining, we are still looking bright. Why? Because we slept well. Our brain had time to um, recalibrate 
and now we're looking bright in the presence of God. So sleep is a condition of the body and mind in which your nervous system is inactive. Your body, your nerves that sense impulses and some, you know, connections in your body are inactive. Your eyes are closed and your postural muscle relaxed. Now, some of us are here and um, some of us can testify. You know, you're in the church and probably you're jotting what the preacher is saying and um, a time comes when sleep calls and before you know it, the barrel drops off, right? And you sharply pick it up. Some other time you can be nodding, yes, 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 this is good, this is calm. And before you know it, sleep comes in, palm, And you're nodding. So that means we lost control of our muzzle. So our muzzle is being relaxed, and that's what happens when we sleep. Consciousness is practically suspended. You are not aware of your environment. You are not aware of the things happening around you. And many people can testify. Sometimes you enter public transport and um, sleep calls. And before you open your eyes, you've the bus stop. And you will sharply shout, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. And you have to use uh, 100 Naira or 150 to take another bus back to your location. What happened? You lost consciousness of your environment. You are totally off. And that's what happened when we sleep. And we are not looking at the physical sleep today by the special grace of God. We are concentrating on spiritual sleep. We're not looking at the physical. Physical sleep is good, it's calm, it's, it's okay for our body, but spiritual sleep is not. It's not. Hallelujah. 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 So while the, enemy, while the men, while men slept, his enemy came and saw tears among wheat and went his way. And you know the issue with tears? It has the same resemblance with wheat. And that's where the problem is. If you're not um, an expert in the field, you might not be able to identify which is the main plant. You might not be able to know which is the truth and which is false. You might not be able to know the real thing from the counterfeit thing. So which is the real thing? But tears only has a form of holiness in it. It appears like tears. But at the end, when it starts coming up, that's when you know this is poison. And that's why we have to watch it. Because when we sleep, the enemy came and dropped something that looks like the real thing. And it grows with us. And we don't know. Because at the early stage, you will not be able to identify. And it's when it's grown up, they will say, Toti di baraku. That's when you now want to start uh, sorting the tears from the weeds. And at that point, if you remove the tears from the weeds, some things might go wrong. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are not looking at um, sleep regards our physical life, but we are considering sleep as regards our spiritual lives. Some people have allowed the spirit of slumber and sleep to operate their spiritual life. Today they are awake. Tomorrow they are sleeping. Next tomorrow they are awake. The day after they are asleep. And all these things are things that is affecting us. All these things are things that will not make us grow as Christians. So while men slept, his enemy came and saw tears among the weeds and went his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to watch it because some people are engaging in some kind of dangerous sleep that is dangerous to them. When your measure of sleep has gotten to the point that you have to be shaken to wake up, when it has gotten to the stage that you have to be pushed to wake up, when it has gotten to the stage that you have to not only tap, tap does not work for you again, you have to be beaten to wake up, then things are going wrong. And that's where some of us are today. And that's where the problem is. We are not meant to sleep spiritually. Physical sleep is good, but spiritual sleep is bad. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the time for us to wake as children of God. This is the time for us to arise from our slumber. It's the time for us to arise from our sleep and wake up to the things that God has for us. Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Christ will give you light. Arise from your sleep. Arise from your slumber. And wake up to the light of Christ. Isaiah 61. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It is time for us to arise to the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just us by the way and let's go to what we have today. A lot of people are sleeping. A lot of people are engaged in something that is bad for them and bad for their spiritual life. And that is spiritual sleep. This is totally bad. Physical sleep, like I said, is good. But spiritual sleep is not. It's not. And that's why we have to wake up as children of God. When it has gotten to the stage that the message being preached by the preacher has no meaning to you. When it has gotten to the stage that the things of the kingdom does not matter to you. When it has gotten to the stage that you are only in church because you want to appear to men that you are in church and nothing makes sense to you. Brethren, we have to watch it because the enemy is here to sow tears. Hallelujah. 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 So we have to wake up this morning and arise. The message this morning is not just to challenge us, but to change us and to make us rise up as youth and as people of God, to take up the responsibility that we have before us. It is during sleep that the enemy comes and so tears. These are the things that happen when we sleep. The enemy comes and so tears and so evil seed while we sleep because our inactivity is what makes them active. And that's why spiritual sleep is bad. It's because we are not active. That's why they are awake to do whatever they want to do. And they are fast, they are swift. They are not dulling. They come, they sow whatever they want to sow, they go. Because they have a lot of ground to gain. And that's why we have to watch it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So during sleep, the enemy came. And it's a period for them to sow tears in our lives because our inactivity is what prompted their own activity. They don't need coffee to stay awake. They don't need a push to stay awake. All they need is our inactivity. All they need is our laziness for them to be active. Hallelujah. I pray the Lord will heal us all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because they know that once you are active, it's difficult for them. They can't in the first place come to the field and sow tears among the weeds when you're awake because they know that you're on fire, you're burning. They know it's difficult for them. They know when you're awake spiritually, they dare not move near you, else they will burn. And that's why they're looking for that opportunity for us to sleep so that they will quickly come and sow their evil seed and move their way. And that's why we have to watch it. We have to arise so that we will not be a victim. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will not come directly at you. Because they know that when they come directly, ah, you will wake up and start fighting. No. All they need is to come when you are least expected and sow that little seed. I know they go. I know what seed does. It germinates. And after it germinates, that's when you start shooting. But if you're sensitive enough and you are the owner of a field, 
and you plant something and you are sensitive enough, you will know that something has gone wrong when you come back to that field. And it will be easy for you to quickly identify and pick what is not away to cut off the germination of weeds. And you now know the funniest thing, weeds grow faster than the main plants. That's why you see evil spread faster than good. Praise God. Praise God. So we have to be sensitive to the things of the spirits. We have to be sensitive to the things of the kingdom of God. We have to arise and wake up to the thing that the Lord has had, that the Lord has planned for us. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's look at what happened during the time of sleep. The time of sleep is the time that the enemy comes to sow tears. It's the time that the enemy comes to plant evil seeds in our life. It's the plan, is the time of insecurity. It's the time that we cannot protect ourselves. It's the time that we are unguarded. You know, some of our devotions have been saying we should guard our hearts, right? I think um, day before yesterday and um, yesterday. How many of us go through that? It says we should guard our hearts. Because guarding your hearts, you'll be protected. Hallelujah. So a time of sleep is a time of insecurity. It's a time where you are unprotected. It's a time that you've let yourself lose for the enemy to operate, which is dangerous for us as sons and daughters of God. It's a time of inactivity. A time of delusion when we assume that things are going well for us. When we assume that everything is fine. Oh, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm collected. Just for you to wake up and notice that something has gone wrong. Some of us have the calling of God upon our lives. God has showed us what to do. And has showed us how to do it. And he has showed us how to go about it. He has given us where to go. He has showed us where to go. Has told us what to do. And has instructed us on how to do it. But what do we do? We slept off. We slept off. And this is bad for us. Just imagine the things, or begin to think about the things that God has revealed to you. Think about the things that God has revealed to you. You know, some seasons ago, it was a season of revelation, and it still is, because every season that we have in this house didn't pass away. For every season that is declared, I want you to know that it has come to stay. So when we say this season is our season of revelation, it's not that that first three months is just for revelation. No. It has come to stay. It has come to stay. God has revealed a lot of things to us. But look at where we are. Look at where we are standing. Look at how we are dealing with things. Is that why God entrusts us with these things? The vision that God has revealed to you and he has even made provision for it. We slept off and let it slide. And here we are every Sunday gathering in his presence, waiting to receive more. But that which he has given unto you, you slept off and you allow the enemy to come and sow tears and bad things are happening and we keep complaining. When we are supposed to take charge of things, we are sleeping off. We are dozing. That was what happened to the three disciples when Jesus called them to join with him to get the man. After he has um, told them the things that were before him. And he told them, um, guys, can you just come up with me and watch the how with me? And how the truth, they all followed Jesus, Peter, James, and John, and went with him. And when Jesus separated himself to pray, he came back and he saw them. Man, you're sleeping. Is this the right time for you to sleep? In Mark chapter 14, verse 37, he said, And he cometh unto them and find them sleeping, and said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? 
Can't you just keep this hour with me? When you're supposed to engage in the things of the spirits so that things will change, you're sleeping. When you're supposed to charge up and be on fire for the things of God, you're sleeping. And later, things will happen and you begin to fight. And you know one amazing thing that I noticed? Every time someone is sleeping, or Peter is sleeping, Jesus calls him Simon. And any time that is active and is awake, Jesus calls him Peter. Have you observed that? Because there are a lot of uh, meanings to Simon anyway. But let me pick one of them, which is read. For those that don't know what read is, it's like that um, little spring up from stubborn grass that is tossed away by wind. Or if you can't get that, you know that stuff that um, grow on top of corn, maize, Abby? That little plantain that comes off, that they call irukere. It's like that. When wind blows, it moves it here and there. Tossed forth and back. And if you notice every time Peter missed it, Jesus would say, Simon, do you care about me? Will you feed my sheep? That was after Jesus' resurrection and he went to fish. But when Peter is awake and is on fire, Jesus will tell him, Peter, meaning the rock, upon you I will build my church. And when Jesus knows that I, Simon activity will come up, but I will soon go and sleep. He said, I've prayed for you. And Peter, while he's supposed to keep watch and be awake, is sleeping. And the enemy came and saw tears and went. When they're supposed to be active for the things of God, they are sleeping. And at the end, Jesus told them, now is the hour, let's rise up. And it is when they were going, the activities of the enemy began to show. While they were sleeping, the enemies were on their way. They are walking. While they were sleeping and doing things that are supposed to en en enrich their life and change their destiny, they are sleeping. And no wonder when they came, it's easy for them to draw out the sword. Because they thought it's physical. But the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. If Peter had watched the night, Maybe when the temptation came, we'll read in verse 38, so that you will not fall into temptation. Maybe when the temptation came, Peter would have been able to resist the devil and he wouldn't have been able to deny. But while he was supposed to settle all those in the place of prayer, he was sleeping. If the only time you have to pray is the time that the church has set vigil for you to pray, then something is wrong. If the only time we have as men is the time that we pray every first Friday of the month, huh, something is wrong. This is the time for us to rise as men. A lot of destiny is tied to our lives. A lot of destinies, that of your children, that of your wife, that of your family members, a lot of destiny are tied around us. And we all wait to pray first Friday of the month and that prayer is all that takes you through the month. The destiny of a child that you are to shepherd in the way of the Lord is there. The destiny of the daughter of Zion that the Lord has entrusted you with is there. And all you could do is sleep. The programs that is being shown on the TV has taken the heart of your children to the extent that the things of God cannot occupy their hearts. Ha! It's dangerous. It's dangerous. We need to rise as men. This is the time for us to arise. Look at the lives God has so much blessed us with. For God to entrust you with a woman. And in his own gladness, he entrusts you with his heritage. And all we can think of is to provide for their daily needs. Biscuits, sweets. Ah. 
it is well with us. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant for the devil. Our adversary walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Many Christians are lazy. We don't want to do the work of God again. We don't want to give ourselves to service. We are sleeping. It's time for us to arise and do the things of the kingdom. It's time for us to awake and face the things that the Lord has placed in our hands. Look at the great giants in this house. Look at the wonderful souls in this house. This place of a truth is too small for us. The men that are in this house. Now, I'm not talking about men as regards to gender, but I'm talking about the sons and daughters of God. We are too big. We are too big to be here. We are meant to be out there winning souls for God. Right in front of us, a generation is passing out and we are here happy with our life. I have a nice ride. I have a cool apartment. I'm okay. My job is fine. Good for you, but bad for you. Men of old stood firm and they are dying in Christ right in our own eyes. And we are here sitting. Can't we just wake up? These are men that started in our age. I was privileged to get the diary of one, one of the men of God. And I saw some things that are God. In 1994, some men were able to plant 34 branches. Are you kidding me? In how many months? And look at the vision God has given unto us all. And here we are, we are not giving ourselves to service. Here we are, we are relaxing. We come every Sunday, we pray, we lift up holy hands, and we go our way. Is that all that it is? Is that all that matters to you? We seek about the physical things. Is that all that you want? What next? You're married. You're, you have a kid. You have a nice ride. You have, what next? Is that all that is to life? What about that person that is losing his life out there and does not know about Jesus? What about that soul that is perishing? Brethren, it's time for us to awake from our slumber and from our sleep. The Lord is calling you and high today. He's reaching out to you. He's reaching out to me. This is not just for you. It's for all of us. It's time for us to rise and do the work of the Father. Let's give ourselves to service. Enough of pride. Enough of ego. Give yourself to service. Maybe your life will get better. Give yourself to service. I beg you in the name of the Lord. It pays. It's difficult. True. But it pays. All these things that we seek after, that we run after, they will come to us. They will come. We don't have to sweat it. They will come. The things of this world that we run after, Matthew 6, 33, they will run after us because we are seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hallelujah. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So brethren, it's time for us to awake. It's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to give ourselves to the things of the kingdom. How many people have you been able to reach out to since the beginning of this year? And here we are relaxing. You have the spirit of the Lord in you. You've been blessed with the gifts and spirit of the Lord. But of what result? For your personal self? For you to live your life, for you to be able to do things that you want. That's not the life, type of life God wants for us. It's time for us to take our place. While a generation is facing out, another one is coming in. And it's our time, it's time for our generation to rise up. Those generations are looking up to us. They are. And how will the fire be 
when it gets to their turn, if you are like this? How would it be? If the fire that is from our parents is reduced by the way when it gets to us, <laughs> there's a problem. They've laid the foundation we're supposed to build on it. Men and brethren, it's time for us to arise and do the work of the Lord like it ought to be done. Great men, great people of substance, great people of substance. I can tell you, every soul in this house is blessed. But what are we doing with it? It's time for us to arise and seek the face of the Lord so that he will lead us through and we will be able to do that which he has sent us to. I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord will rise up, will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So shall we rise on our feet? I want us to pray a little. While men slept, his enemies came and saw tears among the weights and went his way. This is the time for us to arise as sons and daughters of the Lord and do the work of an evangelist. Let's take up that responsibility. Let's take up that charge. Next year should not be like this. Nothing can stop us. The enemy is trying on his own to stop us. But his power is nothing compared to what God has in stock for us and that which the Lord has blessed us with. So can we just lift up our voice and say, Lord, I receive the grace to arise because if you're sleeping spiritually, it might be difficult for you to wake up on your own. The Lord will charge us up and we are awake. We arise to the things of the Spirit. Lord, wake me up from this useless deep slumber that I've engaged in. Wake me up in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we just open our mouth and pray unto God? Let's pray unto the Lord that the Lord will wake us up from our sleep, from our slumber. That the Lord will wake us up. Jesus. The Lord has given us a great commission. And for this house, he has given us the mandate to raise ambassadors for him. But men that are supposed to raise ambassadors are busy sleeping. And the enemy is sowing evil seed on the field. Men that are supposed to win souls, to raise ambassadors, ambassadors kingdom ambassadors, are sleeping. Men arise, it's time for us to arise and do the work of the Father. Can we pray this prayer of dedication? The Lord, I surrender myself to you. I give myself to you. I surrender all that I am and that I have unto you. I give it all to you. Take it all, Lord. Take it all. Take it all, Father. I give it all to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, have I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I will pray. Amen. People of God, before I leave, I just want us to raise up our hand. 
and declare with all sincerity of heart and pledge unto God. If you can, you can repeat after me. Can we just say a few words of prayer of dedication unto the Lord? Heavenly Father, our Redeemer, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, I come before you this day. I come before you this hour. This is all that I am. And this is all that I have. I give it all to you. I give myself to soul winning. I receive the grace to have compassion for souls. I arise in the name of the Lord. I arise in the name of the Lord. I arise in the name of the Lord. Can we just put our hands together for the living God? We give you praise. Thank you, ancient of days. Be now exalted, our Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen.